Welcome back. We shall now begin our session on the book review. Does everyone have their copy of Christian Love, the book? Yes, uh, please raise your hand if you do not have a copy of the book. Okay. <laughs> Okay, let's begin with a word of prayer. <coughs> let's pray. Our Father in heaven, we thank thee for thy grace in keeping us through the conference so far. We thank thee for the old house that thou has provided for us. And we pray now that as we study this book on Christian love, that thou would convict our hearts and instruct us on how we may read well and why we should read as well. And would thou bless the truth to our hearts and give us joy in the process of doing so. This we ask and pray in Jesus' name. Amen. So to begin, we shall be answering the question, why is reading good books important? This is a very important question for us as we seek to examine what is the old paths. The first thing about reading good books is that we learn from those who have studied the scriptures in depth. God has given to us pastors, teachers, who have an occupation in reading the word, in studying the word in depth. And they have brought about books for our consumption so that they have done the hard work of digging into the scriptures and we can receive the benefit of reading the book. And often, we give up reading because we are approaching a new truth that we have not discovered before. It's something that we do not know about God or about the Bible. And that is why we are very prone to be frustrated and then we'll give up on reading. But that shouldn't be the case. It is because we do not know, that is why we seek to discover more. Because the Christian life is all about knowing more about God and loving Him better. The difficulty is what helps us to grow in our understanding of God. So as Pastor earlier mentioned, whenever you feel the agonizing feeling when you cannot really understand a paragraph of reading, it is okay, it is normal, and it is the process that the Lord uses for you to understand new truth and to imbibe it upon your heart. And an example of this is why we read textbooks in the first place. It is for those who do know the truth. For example, if you're studying biology, those that know about biology will write the textbook and they will frame their thought process proceeding from one truth to the other. So they'll go in a process so that you'll be able to understand once you grasp the first topic, then they'll move on to the second topic, third topic. And that is how books are also structured, like this Christian book on Christian love. The next thing on why reading a book is important is because through it, we learn to communicate good truths to others. Reading good books is not only for our own spiritual benefit, but it is also for the spiritual benefit of those around us. It is because we have understood the truths of Scripture, that is why we are able to help others along in their Christian journey. When they come to us with questions, with doubts, with fears, we know how to, from the Bible, from the Word of God, instruct, direct, comfort, and help them along their path towards godliness and love for the Lord. We are able to help others from the Scriptures, and in this example of Christian love, we are able to direct people on what God says is the 
the means of how we love one another. How should we love one another? How should we love God? The third thing is that we learn to live out the truths that we read. So not only do we learn from those who have studied in depth, not only do we gain the ability to communicate it with others, but we also learn to imbibe it in our own lives. I've, I've found this to be the case, that Christian books have been a huge part of shaping the way I live, shaping my thoughts, my words, my actions. And I'm sure that um, if you have tasted the richness of this book and the truths that it has communicated, it has helped you as well. What we read plays a huge influence on how we live. What we read plays a huge influence on how we live. If we read much of the news, then what we speak to others will be all about the news and what's going on in the world. If we read much about the scriptures, then when we communicate with others, we'll be directing them to see truth from the scripture. What we read will be how we live. And that is why what we consume is very important. The, when we, what we read plays a big influence on how we live. And this reading requires meditation. It requires heart searching. When we look into our own lives and we examine how we have fallen short, how we have strayed from godliness, and how God is calling us back to himself. This is so that we do not just glance over the book, but that the effects would be prominent and permanent in our lives. And fourthly, the reason why we read good Christian books is that we may love God and others better. Good Christian books will help to humble our hearts and it will exalt the glory of God as well. It has a sanctifying effect on our heart and it leaves it in adoration and awe of God. It rebukes us when we have gone astray and directs us to the path which we should walk. And the problem with many churches today is that there is little love in the church because there is little love for the word, for God, and these truths which are meant to transform our lives in order to love one another. And so, now that you have heard why we should read these good Christian books, we shall be talking about how do we read it? How do we read a book? I'm sure that uh, if you have tried to read it, it must have been quite difficult to read through. Uh, one reason is because of the English, definitely, because it's written in the 17th century. But another reason is because of the depth that they have written. If you, if you looked at the content page, this book is actually a book of sermons. So these are five sermons that the author Hugh Binning actually preached to his congregation. So uh, try to imagine that, that these are actually sermons that Hugh Binning wrote. And if you read the words, you can see how every word on every paragraph is planned to direct you to a certain purpose and uh, destination. That is why he is writing this book on Christian love. So how do we read? This is an important question to ask because knowing how to read will help us with our learning. We don't want to jump into a book without understanding clearly the context of it. So I'm sure if you have tried to read the book, you have grasped some idea of what the contents of the book is. And so for, we'll be doing this as a group activity. So 
if you are able to turn to the person beside you or the people behind you to do the activity together, we shall be trying to first understand the big picture. What is the author trying to communicate in this book? Often we get lost and we give up on reading because we have forgotten where the author is going. So we, have, we read a very difficult paragraph and then we're like, oh no, what, what is he trying to, what is the big picture? What is he trying to get at? And then we get lost. And the purpose of getting a good big picture overview of the whole book is to help us to journey with the author in order to understand the book and to get to where he wants us to go. So this can be done very easily by reading the content page. So if you look at your content page, um, okay, this one is quite difficult because it is just uh, someone one, someone two, uh, sorry, chapter one, chapter two, chapter three, four and five. So there isn't really a proper content page. Um, but if you buy the, some of the books later that we'll be displaying, there'll be a proper content page where the author will lay out the flow of thought that he's going through his sermons, through the various chapters of the book. And this is very important because it creates a big picture for you to see of what is the problem the author is trying to address and what is he trying to get his readers to understand and to apply to their lives. Okay. The next thing, besides reading the content page, would be to read the preface. The preface will be, if you have this copy, would be on the uh, page seven with the Roman, Roman numerals, seven to nine. And the purpose of reading the preface, I know that sometimes when we read books, we like to skip the preface, get right into the book, go right to chapter one. But the purpose of the preface is that the author is trying to communicate the problem in the society. For example, in this book on Christian love, the author tries to show that there is a lack of love in the church. That is the problem. And how does he go about addressing that? He will talk about in the preface. That is why it is very important to read the preface. And so we shall be trying to do that now. Um, if, if you would like, drawing might actually be helpful if you are a visual learner, learner, which I'm actually sure everyone is because that is how we learn as, as a child. We learn through pictures. And I think even when we grow older, pictures are very good for learning. Even if you draw a stick man, I think it will help in some way. Yeah. So. Now, as a group, I would like for all of us to read the preface in your small groups with each other and try to draw something as a group that you think the author is trying to communicate. Draw the problem and draw what he is trying to direct his readers towards. This, uh, we'll do this for about 10 minutes, and then we'll move on to the next thing. This is important because it will help us in the process of understanding the book better. You can pray with your group, and then you may begin. Okay, I hope you, everyone had a good discussion so far. Uh, we shall be continuing discussing, so I uh, can just pause for a while now. Uh, just give me maybe less than five minutes. Um, so in this section, we have seen the big picture of what the author is trying to communicate throughout his book. So whatever he's going to say in his book, even though it's maybe a bit hard to read, is trying to help you along to attain to this purpose, to this end. Yeah. So let's just focus on that. It's good to have the big picture always there while you're reading so that um, you like, would not get lost in the process of reading because it, it is hard. But 
is good at the same time. So in this next section, we shall be trying to link the various chapters together. We shall be trying to link the various chapters together. Um, the good thing about Puritan writers uh, like this writer is that they, are, they write in a very methodical way, a uh, very logical way. So the, if you look through the chapters, you'll find there's like first point, second point, third point, fourth point, fifth point, sixth point. And there is a structure. So there is a structure which they want you to go for. So before delving very deep into the book, like starting from chapter one, reading your first word all the way to the end, um, it is good to start by linking this topical points together. So the chapter headings, um, let us try to link it together now. And you can, if you have drawn something, you can try to add the chapter headings into your picture and see how they fit as a whole. Yeah, so if, if you can, you can use the drawing you have right now and add even more to it, but not too much until like you do not know where everything is. So just, just enough to be able to understand the flow of thought. So how does chapter one relate to chapter two? How does chapter two relate to chapter three? Three, four, five, they're all linked together. So it's good to see them as different portions leading to the same end. Yeah, so by linking the sections, this is it's a very difficult process to do. Uh, maybe slightly uncomfortable for your brain because it is uh, difficult, but can, uh, can trust me that it is very, very helpful for reading Puritan books later on when you start to read word for word. Yeah, it'll help you in the process of understanding the book better. Yeah, so now we shall spend um, 15 minutes. So five minutes, uh, each person in your group, try to understand the flow of one sermon. So if every, you can split the task, there are five sermons. So if there are five people in the group, you can do one sermon each. If there are two people doing together, you can do like maybe two sermons, then the other person do three sermons, for example. And do not read the all the words, uh, the main thing is to just scan through to see how each um, section heading links to the next section. So if you look, for example, at um, okay. a good example is chapter two. If you look at chapter two, for example, on page 11 for this book, that is part one, part two, part three, four, five, six. So it is good to see how these things link together and how they add to the bigger picture of the problem, the purpose, and the end. Yeah, so maybe in your groups, spend some time to just understand the section headings of, I think for chapter three, it's split by first, second, third, fourth. Yeah. So uh, it may be quite confusing at first. Like, for, for example, chapter three on page 33, there's like first, and then on page 33, then in 34, there's another first. Um, that's because, like, the page 34 first is in the page 33 first. So it's like a subheading of the main heading. So Puritan writers like, like to do that. So try to identify how these things link together and then explain it to your group, explain it to one another. So maybe the person who did sermon one can start first, then sermon two, sermon three, then everyone can brainstorm and, on how this links together. And then at the end, you can just add to your diagram or add to what you have been writing so far. Yeah, so let's do this for 15 minutes. Okay, good job everyone so far. Um, when it's okay if uh, you haven't 
uh, completed the whole chapter. Maybe you can start to describe to each other what your chapter is about and then see how it all links together uh, in the big picture. shall uh, cause call of us back together. Uh, hope that you're having a really awesome discussion. Um, so it's, it's good to continue discussing. So maybe uh, for lunch, we can continue <laughs> discussing the book once you get your food. <laughs> yeah, that, that's great. Yeah, it's good to, it's great when uh, we as Christians have conversations about Christ, his word, uh, his truths, it helps uh, all of us as we seek to uh, grow in grace and love towards the Lord. So continue doing what you're doing uh, uh, as we go for lunch later as well. Um, this diagram of flow of thought, uh, whether you do it uh, linearly or you drew stigmatic pictures like I did, um, it will help you as you continue to read on through this book. So whichever book you are at, whenever you are stuck, just you can look back at your diagram and see hmm, how, does, how does this analogy, how does this example that the author is trying to bring here, how does it help to enhance the truth that he has uh, stated? How does it help to um, help towards the problem? And how does it help to get towards the purpose? Yeah, so this process is difficult, uh, definitely. Um, because this is the first time all of us are doing it. So it's okay. Um, after, after we do it more and more often, uh, you get familiar. Uh, the thing about this is that as you've done it in a group, it means that you can also do it as a group. Uh, so we have many books later. It, it's possible you can do it with another person, do it with your family, just get a whole stack of the same book. And then everyone can just um, do it as a family devotion. Um, 
brainstorming together, trying to understand the uh, author's point of view and how he links it all back to the word, the glory of God, uh, the good of the people. Yeah, so you can do it as a family, do it um, with a friend, just one person you can like catch up for lunch, after makan, then after that, take out the book they all are doing together and read together, understand together. So it's something you can do anytime. Um, this process of understanding the big picture uh, is something that can be done uh, maybe in a 30 minute session, 45 minutes together. Um, and it will help a lot, a lot later on as you read the book. You'll find that you can read much faster uh, because you have already processed uh, the big picture of, sorry, the big picture of what the book is trying to say. Yeah, so I hope that it helps. Uh, we shall continue tomorrow diving more into what the book says. Yeah, so I shall, I shall pray uh, and then we shall uh, ask pastor to pray as well uh, and then we may go for our lunch. Our Father in heaven, we thank thee for thy grace in helping us through this session of book review. Uh, we thank thee for granting to us the grace to understand the big picture which Hugh Binning is trying to communicate to us through thy word. Uh, we pray that as we understand what true Christian love is, as we seek to uh, see our fallen condition and our redeemed condition, uh, as we see the love of Christ uh, as the motivation for our, why we should love one another, would thou help us to love rightly, to love according to thy word to enjoy uh, each other's company as well. Bless us as we continue to read good books and um, help us not to shy away from the difficulty, uh, but to embrace it with joy, knowing that uh, Thou has ordained it, that through it we may grow to love one another better, to love Thee more and to see more of Thy goodness and Thy uh, greatness and Thy uh, kindness towards us. This we ask and pray in Jesus' name. Amen.